when you have Krishna present to guide you through the Gita, all you need to do is follow Him. Remember that Krishna is already there. Don't imagine, don't speculate. The Gita is an instruction to be followed. The Gita is a song to be loved. So, uh, my second question uh, relates to something that you said that you talked about that you briefly touched upon earlier in, in a different context. So, uh, humans have evolved to live along, alongside animals, non-humans. Now, for various reasons, with varying approaches of different countries, animals have largely been subjugated to mass exploitation. It is, it is understandable that countries like China and Japan who have faced large-scale famines, droughts and sieges by colonial powers have resorted to a culture of eating and consuming absolutely whatever they, they can get their hands on to. However, the West takes the approach of factory farming for increasing large-scale efficiency, however it, inhuman it, might, it may be. But leaving consumption aside, even coexistence with animals throughout the world has radically declined. A hunter-gatherer, when it hunted, uh, would understand the effort it took to kill life and consume it for personal benefit. They would understand that the ecosystem they live in has taken a hit, which would eventually affect them as well. Today, killing non-humans for consumption, chasing them away to make better buildings and larger construction sites, using them to test our commodities has become so easy and so distant that the exchange of paper currency or even uh, a tap of a few, few buttons on Google Pay can retrieve for us the lives of as many animals as we can afford. We have completely lost the gratitude we once had the world, over, world all over, of course, but now increasingly in India as well. India, which is the largest vegetarian country in the whole world, is now too getting desensitized towards the plight of non-humans. Just last week in the college, in our college itself, we had a chain mill uh, with, where people objected to stray dogs licking water coolers to have a drop of water in this extreme heat. Uh, their solution was not to provide, some of them did speak up to provide water for, for, the, water, uh, for the dogs, but most of them also said that just move the coolers away. But they did not understand why that was happening. My question is whether there is any way to kickstart a revolution for reinvigorating uh, empathy towards the constant exploitation of animals that we do, or at least to reinvigorate gratitude towards, to, gratitude towards the fact that where I am living, what I am eating, what I am purchasing, and consequently how I am littering is directly impacting the lives of millions of non humans and I'm not just talking about eating. Even the existence and birth of a, of a single human threatens the lives of several animals directly within the current state. Yes. Again, sorry for the long question. You see, when you are living your entire life from the wrong center, then... Uh, all kinds of exploitations take place. Animals are supposed to live from their animal center. Human beings are supposed to live from a human center. When human beings start living from an animal center, they become very dangerous to animals and to human beings. Are you getting it? Huh? Classically, it is put this way, that when Purush gets too close to Prakriti, then he becomes very dangerous to Prakriti. Hmm? We are not human beings at all. We are animals with a lot of intellect and resultant technology. So, all that we have is, is greed, self-centeredness, illusion, ignorance, And we have tremendous firepower to back these tendencies, to execute these tendencies. The 
the behavior we display towards animals is the behavior we display towards any conscious thing that is powerless. It's not that uh, we are uh, just displaying some kind of speciesism, that we are being unfair or cruel towards other species merely. If you will find an equally powerless human being, you will display the same kind of cruelty and insensitivity towards him or her as well. And we have done that. We still do that. We regularly do that. We do that because there is nothing in the animal center that uh, activates compassion within. The way a human baby is born he is not born to be compassionate. He is not born to be sensitive or loving. We do not understand that. That's the huge arrogance of this modern world and its intellectual thought. It does not want to admit that we are born animals. It does not want to admit that knowledge will not turn the animal into a human being. The modern world does admit the importance of education, but it talks of education that feeds the animal center. It does not talk of education that will awaken the real center Therefore, all the education that we get simply gets weaponized. We turn our education into weapons to defend the ego and to further our interests to both territorially and psychologically colonize as much space as possible So we are seeing what is happening. It's not surprising at all. And I'm cautioning in advance, you should also not be surprised. If you, if you find animals, if you find human animals, so-called human beings, exploiting each other very openly, as brazenly and as cruelly as we exploit animals. It would sound strange, even ridiculous as I speak it, but do not be surprised if you find packaged human meat available in supermarkets. Just as you have factory farming of pigs and cows, you can even have factory farming of, of human beings. Because look at uh, the way the ego operates. It cares only for itself. It has no faculty for understanding. Why don't we understand that love has to be taught? That a person has to be educated in compassion. It hurts us to admit that love is not something biological. That you cannot know love just by the dint of being born a human being. You can live an entire life of 80 years and not know love at all. You could be masters from an IIT, you could be a PhD from an Ivy League place. And it's entirely possible you could be totally loveless. The education we give does not 
टीच द फंडामेंटल्स एट ऑल वाई बिकॉज वी हैव अ स्टेक इन पॉजिटिंग दैट द फंडामेंटल्स आर ऑलवेज एंड ऑलरेडी बायोलॉजिकली इन प्लेस नो द फंडामेंटल्स कैन नॉट कम टू यू जस्ट बायोलॉजिकली लुक एट द स्टूपिडिटी ऑफ द आर्ग्यूमेंट वी होल्ड वी से आई एम अ ह्यूमन बींग सो आई नो लव दैट्स अ स्टूपिड आर्ग्यूमेंट आई एम अ ह्यूमन बींग देर फोर आई एम इक्वल टू एन अदर ह्यूमन बींग इक्वली स्टूपिड आई एम अ ह्यूमन बींग देर फोर आई अंडरस्टैंड लाइफ idiotic and it is on these idiotic foundations that we are raised and therefore you are seeing nothing but our barbarism all around us i'm sure you know of the number of species that get extinct by the hour i'm not talking of a monthly number not even a daily figure i'm talking of the number of species that go extinct every hour a lot of that is man made we are forcing the rest of this planet into extinction obviously we are not going to survive she are arrogance just arrogance people are walking around confidently thinking that they are human beings we do not understand we are just glorified animals we are intellectual beasts we don't want to admit that our universities are full of beasts our politicians our leaders our artisans our intellectuals sheer arrogance to believe that we are what can be rightfully called as a human being language does not make you human thought does not make you human clothes do not make you human technologies and inventions do not make you human knowledge does not make you human even evolution does not make you human it's a very special very exclusive very rare thing to be a human and it's an arduous thing it's a thing of attainment not a thing of coincidence won't happen on its own it has to be purposefully strived for and then it comes man is a beast that came out of the jungle and has now set the jungle ablaze there any way to counter what the industrial powers can do or will do or how distant we are becoming other than again other than self responsibility because i don't really have a lot of trust on individual powers of people i don't think they will uh, they will inherently want to better themselves is there any other way we can the other way is what you would call as a benevolent kind of authoritarian rule but if you will see that's even more difficult to trust compared to individual responsibility 
so i would rather bet on individual responsibility the masses have to be awakened and don't worry it is not all that difficult it is very difficult but not impossibly difficult because the world is already crumbling under the weight of its arrogance if people do not willingly believe in what i am saying then the proof of facts will force them to believe in it when you will see nothing but fires all around you how will you refute the truth and for how long thank you so much uh, acharya ji for your wonderful thoughts your intellectual presentation and uh, especially speaking about the absolute necessity and emergency of uh, everyone to introduce spirituality and become responsible so uh, really thoughtful and uh, you also speak about the lower nature of the mind how it always drags everyone down and very very thankful to you for your time and uh, the questions asked by the students are also wonderful and we sincerely uh, express our gratitude as institute and as from every one's side i'm expressing my gratitude so we uh, deeply respect your team also for uh, actually efficiently managing the questions and putting them in order so that everybody who is not answered question also could take benefit out of it and also we thank our director uh, sir and also chenchara ji for um, inviting you here and also engaging all of us in this wonderful talk thank you so much thank, thank you so much, much.